February 2003. An Aten Thunderbolt is flying over Baghdad when an anti-aircraft missile slams into the aircraft. The hydraulic system goes down. The stabilizer is shredded. Shrapnel fragments punch through the fuselage. Any other plane would be history. The air fills with acrid smoke as 730mm barrels spin at devastating speed. 3,900 rounds per minute tear through armor like paper. Glowing depleted uranium cores slice through 60 tons of Soviet steel and turn it into a blazing furnace in seconds. This is the GAU-8 Avenger Cannon. The most brutal weapon ever mounted on an aircraft. A monster of engineering so lethal they had to build an entire airplane around it. This is the story of how a 30mm cannon didn't just turn the Aten into the terror of enemy tanks, but designed every fiber of its structure to survive the impossible. But after 50 years of service and thousands of missions, the ultimate question emerges. Did this cannon really make the Aten indestructible? Or what part is myth and what part is reality? In 1970, when Pentagon analysts were imagining waves of Soviet tanks rolling across the German border, a nightmare for any armor was born, the GAU-8 Avenger. This isn't just any cannon, it's an engineering beast with seven rotating 30mm barrels that spits death at 3,900 rounds per minute. The numbers are brutal. The weapon weighs 620 pounds without ammunition, but the complete system exceeds 4,000 pounds. Its muzzle velocity reaches 3,400 feet per second, and 80% of projectiles hit within a 40-foot circle at 4,000 feet. But what nobody expected was that this massive recoil would become its greatest advantage. The real secret lies in the ammunition. The PGU-14 projectile uses depleted uranium cores, material three times denser than steel and self-sharpening. On impact, the air fills with the smell of burning metal as the aluminum casing strips away and the uranium core becomes a glowing dart that punches through armor like butter. It can penetrate 2.7 inches of armor at 550 yards. Depleted uranium doesn't just penetrate, it's pyrophoric. It ignites on contact with air, creating hell inside the enemy tank that incinerates crew, fuel, and ammunition. A single projectile can turn 60 tons of steel into a burning coffin. But there's a controversy that's haunted this ammunition for decades. Does the price of its devastating effectiveness justify the human health risks we're still discovering? The Aten isn't a plane with a cannon. It's a cannon with wings. When General Electric unveiled the GAU-8 in 1971, Fairchild Republic engineers faced a unique challenge. How to build an aircraft around a weapon the size of a car. The cannon is mounted slightly offset to port so the firing barrel aligns with the aircraft's longitudinal axis. This prevents recoil from throwing off the trajectory, because firing at full rate generates 44.5 kilonewtons of recoil, equivalent to the thrust of one of its engines. What nobody anticipated was that this brutal force would end up saving more lives than it took. The fuselage incorporates 1,200 pounds of titanium armor. The famous bathtub surrounding the pilot is between half an inch and one and a half inches thick and can withstand direct hits from 23 millimeter projectiles. The fuel tanks are self-sealing. The hydraulic systems are redundant. The engines are mounted high to prevent smoke and flashes from the cannon from affecting them. But the most ingenious design is in the details. The system return spent casings to the drum to prevent them from falling into the engines. The nose landing gear was shifted right to make room for the ammunition drum. Even the autopilot automatically engages when pulling the trigger, stabilizing the aircraft during firing. The result is perfect symbiosis between weapon and platform. But this extreme integration means something deeper. The Aten cannot exist without the GAU-8 and the GAU-8 would never reach its potential without the Aten. What they didn't know in 1977 was that they had just created the most resilient aircraft in military aviation history. But was the GAU-8 really responsible for that legendary toughness? In the art of close air support, the Aten wrote the manual. Its typical attack profile begins with a 30-degree dive, approaching the target at 420 miles per hour a speed that allows maintaining aim during crucial seconds, 
pilots employ short bursts of 1 to 2 seconds, firing between 60 and 120 projectiles that are enough to neutralize most targets. The deafening metallic roar echoes as the seven barrels spin at devastating speed. A typical GAU-8 employment uses 120 rounds, meaning an Aiton can attack between 9 and 10 targets before exhausting its ammunition. But in 2022, they discovered something that changed everything we knew about its effectiveness. The cannon's effective range is 1,300 yards, but optimal penetration is achieved at 330 yards, a distance that places the Aiton within enemy fire range. This is where the Aiton's shoot-and-scoot philosophy makes sense. Get close, devastate the target, and get out before the enemy can react. But the real revolution came in 2022. In Nevada tests, A-10s demonstrated they could neutralize modern tanks equipped with explosive reactive armor. Analysts confirmed that tanks were disabled after attack with armor-piercing incendiary rounds. Against massive armored forces, Aiton formations can attack nearly 40 armored vehicles with 30mm ammunition. It's devastating firepower that no other aircraft can match. But there's a secret the manuals don't tell. The GAU-8 doesn't just kill tanks. Its real power lies in something much more sinister and effective than pure destruction. January 1991, Kuwait Desert. Captain John Marks and Eric Solomonson took off in their A-10s for a routine mission. They returned having destroyed 23 Iraqi tanks in three sorties. Throughout the Gulf War, A-10s destroyed over 900 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 military vehicles, and 1,200 artillery pieces. But the moment that defined the Aiton legend occurred on February 6, 1991. Captain Robert Swain was flying over Kuwait when he detected an Iraqi helicopter. Using only the GAU-8 cannon, he achieved the Thunderbolt's first air-to-air -air kill. An aircraft designed to kill tanks had just shot down a helicopter with its main gun. During 20 years of conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, the GAU-8 adapted to new threats. The insurgents didn't have tanks, but they had improvised vehicles, fortified positions, and machine gun nests. The weapon demonstrated its versatility against soft targets, primarily using HEI explosive ammunition instead of armor-piercing rounds. What came next, nobody saw coming. Psychological terror became more lethal than bullets. But the GA-8's most devastating effect wasn't physical, it was psychological. The distinctive deafening roar of the weapon became a symbol of terror for the enemy and hope for friendly troops. The bullets travel so fast they impact before the sound arrives, creating a surreal experience where destruction precedes the metallic, crushing thunder. In 2024, the Aiton found a new enemy, Kamikaze drones. The aircraft adapted by incorporating APKWS-2 guided rockets to shoot down drones, proving that after nearly 50 years, it's still evolving. But behind every successful mission hides an uncomfortable reality the Pentagon prefers to keep quiet. The legend of the indestructible Aiton wasn't born from military propaganda. It was born from real stories of extreme survival. The aircraft is designed to absorb impacts and keep flying with its titanium bathtub, redundant hydraulic systems, and manual emergency controls. The acrid smell of JP-8 fuel filled the air as mechanics counted holes in the fuselage. Similar cases repeated for decades. A. Tens returning with baseball-sized holes. Engines on fire. Wing sections torn off. The straight wing configuration, separated and elevated engines, and reinforced structure allowed the aircraft to tolerate damage that would have brought down any fighter. But here's the secret few understand. The GAU-8 wasn't just a devastating weapon. It also reduced exposure to enemy fire. While other aircraft needed multiple passes with bombs or missiles, the Aiton could neutralize targets in a single pass with the cannon. Less time over target meant fewer chances of being shot down. The GAU-8 made the Aiton indestructible, not just through the protection they gave it, but through the lethal speed it provided. A perfect paradigm of survival through concentrated firepower. However, Cold War studies calculated that in a conflict against the USSR, about 7% of A-10s would be lost per 100 sorties. Indestructibility was relative and completely dependent on the level of anti-aircraft threat. This brings us to the crucial question. 
What happens when that threat exceeds the limits it was designed for? August 2008, Afghanistan. An Aiton was completing a support mission when a Strela missile battery appeared on radar. The pilot had three seconds to react. He managed to evade them, but the message was clear. The Aiton wasn't invulnerable. Modern air defenses have evolved exponentially since 1977. Portable manpad systems like the Stinger or Igla can bring down an Aiton from 5 miles. Short-range integrated systems like Pantsir or Tor cover up to 25 miles. And long-range SAMs like the S-400 can detect and engage targets up to 250 miles. The dense air of smoke and fragmented metal was no longer enough protection. But the most serious problem for the GAU-8 doesn't come from the sky, it comes from the ground. Modern tanks incorporate explosive reactive armor and active protection systems that can intercept projectiles. Although 2022 tests demonstrated that GA-8 remains effective against reactive armor, APS systems like Israeli Trophy or Russian Arena represent a completely new threat in dense urban environments. The surgical precision required to avoid civilian casualties severely limits cannon use. With only 1174 rounds aboard, total firing time is just 15 to 18 seconds. Every burst must count. Even Aiton defenders admit that in a conflict against an advanced adversary like China, the aircraft wouldn't survive. The era of uncontested air superiority that allowed the Aiton to operate freely for 30 years is coming to an end. But there's an even deeper limitation that questions everything we thought we knew about the A-10. The Pentagon's own data reveals an uncomfortable truth about the real effectiveness of the world's most famous cannon. The GAU-8's first major controversy isn't on the battlefield, it's in the laboratory. Depleted uranium can affect normal kidney, brain, liver, heart, and other system function. A 2025 study of Gulf War veterans exposed to depleted uranium revealed continuing effects on bone health after 30 years. Between 1994 and 1995, Aiton aircraft fired approximately 10,000 depleted uranium rounds in Bosnia and Herzegovina. During the 2003 Iraq War, an estimated 1 to 2,000 tons of depleted uranium ammunition was used in just three weeks. Human rights organizations, medical experts, and regional parliaments have questioned DU ammunition use since its first employment in Gulf conflicts. In 2007, France, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Czech Republic voted against a UN resolution to debate the effects of depleted uranium munitions use. The second controversy is strategic. The Aiton's future. The Senate National Defense Authorization Act prohibits complete Aiton fleet retirement in fiscal year 2026, requiring maintenance of at least 103 operational aircraft. The Air Force argues the Warthog would be too vulnerable against advanced air defenses in future wars. Legislative plans point to phased elimination before 2030, but Congress continues resisting total retirement. In 2024, the Air Force sent another 39 Warthogs to the scrapyard. The final debate is the deepest. Is a 30mm cannon still relevant in the era of precision warfare, autonomous drones, and smart munitions? The answer might surprise even the biggest Aiton skeptics. After reviewing 50 years of history, thousands of combat missions, and tons of ammunition fired, the truth about the GAU-8 and Aiton is more complex than the legend. What was legend? The Aiton was never truly indestructible. It was designed to survive extreme damage, but military studies themselves calculated 7% losses in high-intensity conflicts. Its reputation for invulnerability was born from operating primarily in low air threat environment. What was reality? The GA-8 did turn the Aiton into the most effective close air support platform ever built. Aiton formations can attack nearly 40 armored vehicles with 30mm ammunition, a capability no other system can match. 2022 tests confirmed it remains lethal against modern armor. The verdict. The GAU-8 didn't make the Aiton indestructible. It made it instantly and selectively lethal. The Aiton's survival depended on speed to eliminate threats before they could react. It was indestructible only as long as it was faster at killing than its enemies were at detecting it. 
And as warfare redefines itself with artificial intelligence and autonomous drone swarms, the question is whether any machine will ever again inspire the same respect as this cannon that changed aerial warfare forever. The last A-10s were withdrawn from South Korea in 2025, replaced by F-16s. With retirement scheduled before 2030, we're witnessing the end of an era. The GAU-8 Avenger didn't make the Aten indestructible. It made it something far more valuable, irreplaceable. And perhaps that's the greatest victory of all. 50 years later, we're still looking for something that can do what the Aten does. With the precision it does it, at the cost it does it. Maybe the Aten isn't indestructible, but its legend is.